and we are live. Um, welcome to this uh, latest episode of Totally Unscripted. I'm Martin Hoxie, and um, I'm delighted to be joined uh, by a small gaggle. Um, today we've got Ben Collins. Hi, Ben. Hi, Martin. We have, we have Cleo Espiritu. Hello. Uh, hi, Cleo. <laughs> and we've got uh, my uh, uh, usual partner in crime, Steve Webster. Hi, Steve. Hi. So it is a while since um, Google Cloud Next uh, 19 has passed, but um, I think I'm, I'm going to use the excuse that it's allowed the dust to settle a bit and we can work out what, what has actually kind of fallen and where things are at uh, in, in terms of various things around uh, G Suite and G Suite announcements. But it would be uh, remiss of me not to start without ash asking how Cleo got on, because the she actually took to the stage of uh, Next19 uh, to talk about App Maker. So how was that for you, Cleo? Oh, it was it was great. And you know, it's a, I'm fortunate enough to be able to uh, present along with um, Chris Shaw, so the developer uh, advocate for uh, Google App Maker. And we were able to take team a session. So this, this is my second time, first time. Um, First time was last year when uh, we did a small customer panel and I was part of that. But this time, you know, being able to go on and actually talk about, you know, AppMaker, we kind of went from beginner to more advanced where we started with, here's how you built an application and demonstrated that and then some cool integrations you can do. And then Chris had a really interesting uh, little uh, Cloud Vision API uh, integration with AppMaker. So, you know, being able to present kind of something for everyone was kind of what we were looking yeah. for. And so if whoever's watching haven't checked it out, go <laughs> go have a look. It's uh, Improving Business Process with Amaker, GCT, and as well as Data Studio. And I've also been able to uh, kind of present what uh, my company, ATB Financial, has been doing with our citizen developers. We have a lot of enthusiastic um, citizen developers in our community who, you know, love doing this kind of stuff, love being able to contribute to the app, the developing world because they're not, you know, traditionally traditional software developers or IT or anything like that. So be able to showcase their work as well as, you know, to talk about, you know, how to do cool things as AppMaker. It was definitely a great, great experience in a, in a nice movie theater, no less. <laughs> <laughs> so held at the Matreon, Matreon at the, close at the one of the venues there and yeah it's it's interesting when you're not watch in a theater not yes. watching a movie but rather be in front and a spotlight <laughs> projector light is like mm. right on you <laughs> you are the movie <laughs> <laughs> you know, we are the movie this is no adventure end game but <laughs> I can tell you a few things about that maker <laughs> I remember um, I presented at Web Expo in the U cinemas and um uh, just looking around and it's like, oh, cracky, the, the screen's quite big. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but <Yeah>. um, <laughs> so I don't think there were any app maker related and that, you know, new developments announced, but uh, I know you've kind of bookmarked a number of sessions and you went to a number of sessions um, around app maker at next. What's your kind of general vibe? Are you seeing, um, more maturity in the product and the questions people are asking, or is it still, you know, the majority of people are still kind of at, at the very beginning and just trying to work out where, where to begin? I think, I think, um, I think there's definitely more people who knows about it compared to what it was last year. And I think, you know, what I got out from all the app major session is there's definitely now a lot more examples, a lot more different companies, uh, pretty much every session you go to, there is a different example. <laughs> being shown of a company successfully using AppMaker and really uh, how they how they kind of improved their processes and so forth. So I think that was very nice to see. Um, like some, there's still like some fundamental question, like, you know, in, in my session, you know, people ask about, you know, setting up those SQL databases, which is, you know, a GCP thing, not a G Suite thing. Mm -hmm. So concerns about that and the different SKU. So I talked about that as Studio, which is, again, a different product, right? So there's a lot of, questions on almost like what can you do with um like all the integration points and kind of just setting all that up 
and I think, you know, as people discover more and more and what they can do, I think, you know, those questions are bound to happen. And I'm, I'm glad, you know, people are actually asking those questions. It means they're really diving in and really want to use this as a solution, right? So it's, um, it's yeah, like, I think there's a lot of uh, good sessions of all the good, ex if, you want, if you want to see all the different examples people are doing, definitely lots of material there in CloudNext. Um, but yeah, like in terms of new, new features, like there's definitely some talks about, you know, future work that there's just no date, but at the same time, there is some exciting work coming up, like, um, even making apps even easier to build, like the assistive app building, um, more mobile friendly, better integration with cloud APIs and stuff like that. So not nothing set in stone, but at the same time, there's definitely some exciting exciting uh, stuff that will be coming up in AppMaker. Great. Ben, um, you weren't presenting, but you, you took on the uh, the duties of live blogging, which uh, <laughs> uh, I've tried once in the past and I've vowed never to do again. How did how did you find that? That was interesting, actually. It's um, I mean, it's it's live in inverted commas, a few hours delay at least. But uh, it, between the sessions, I tried to just pen a few thoughts and, and share a few of the slides um, so that people could kind of get uh, a sense of what was going on. Um, and I mean, just to give a sense of what Next is like, I think it had 30,000 attendees this year, 500 sessions, uh, I think over 100 new product announcements. So it's like a gigantic, um, pretty intense week. <laughs> so my first time went was in 2018 and it was pretty overwhelming, uh, but I was a little better prepared this year. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, one tip I would give actually for anybody who's thinking of going is to take a, a battery charger, your own portable battery charger, because your your phone or, or laptop will run out and then the the um, the plugs are just impossible to find. Uh, <laughs> so, so that's a top tip. Um, but yeah, it was, it, you know, another great week. Um, a lot of focus on enterprise mm -hmm. this year, which is unsurprising given that I think the Google Cloud is really gearing up to do a huge push to try and, you know, gain some more market share there. So, um, with you know, the new CEO has come along and, and and he has this big enterprise drive. So day one was all about enterprise, enterprise, enterprise. Um, and then day two was all of the product and developer announcements and, and sessions. Well, actually, the sessions were kind of spread around. But so day two was interesting. Lots of good stuff there, um, which I can dive into Uh in a moment as well. Um, yeah, and then day, day three, the final day, they just kind of wrap it all up with other things going on. Uh, but the sessions are just one small part of the whole mm. next experience. They have the the vendor hall with, you know, with hundreds of vendors, and then they have the developer zone, which is pretty popular for just dropping in and, and hearing about all sorts of other interesting uh, things going on and just get hands-on experience with the labs and all that kind of stuff. So there's there's so much there that it's impossible to to, to do it all, um, but I try to I try to attend you know sessions that were sort of relevant to um, the work I do and that would be interesting mm -hmm. to, to the audience and things. So you know any of the Google Sheets ones and the Data Studio um, and those kind of sessions. So um, a lot of the sessions were recorded and they're on YouTube. I, you, you mentioned the developers. So um, was there anything that that these are generally I think shorter kind of community led talks was my yeah. experience from last year was there anything you kind of dipped into there you you, were, you you ben or cleo that that caught your eye that wasn't necessarily recorded but interesting to kind of note um the, the one thing that i did there participated in was the a data studio meetup um, right. yeah. and really the benefit of the of these meetups and these th these little sessions are that you actually you get to sort of have face-to-face -face time with the developers or the um, product managers and things like that. That you, you know, when when they're giving the presentations, you don't obviously it's one way or whatever. You don't get a chance to talk to them. But then these mm -hmm. in the developer zone, you can really uh, ask the questions you want to ask and and sort of find out really the details of uh, more of the details of things. So it's it's really interesting from that perspective. Um, and you get to meet the other you know lots of the people who are really enthusiastic mm -hmm. about those products and and that technology and so you, you you can get to ask them questions and find out what they're doing and learn that way so it's a it's a really a hugely worthwhile part of the experience and clear was were there any app maker meetups 
Um, I don't believe so. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I missed it. Oh no. <laughs> but yeah, definitely. Yeah, I agree with Ben there. Right? The in-person interactions and yeah. getting even just to say hi to some of the people we've been emailing and <laughs> not actually seeing. Yeah, person, yeah. Right? Yep. So yeah, I think that's a, that's a great that's a part of it. And then yeah, well, not what's on the video is obviously the show floors and you know quite interesting little demos here and there. Right? There's like. We tried a little arcade machine thing that, you know, tried to teach you how to launch Kubernetes. And to be honest, I don't know about Kubernetes, so I failed pretty badly. At that it was even just the knowledge of, oh, okay, that's kind of a cool little concept yeah. idea kind of thing. <laughs> and be able to play around with stuff like that. Ben, for you, I think one of your, your main interests is around Google Sheets. And there was quite a few announcements, I think, around Google Sheets. Were there, was there anything in particular that really caught your eye? Yeah, sure. So um, actually, last year they announced a bunch of interesting stuff. And I thought, you know, this year might be just where they, they don't mention much or how are they going to top that. But it was certainly there were even more announcements, I think, this year that were, that were significant. And um, probably the two, the biggest one, I think, was this thing called Connected Sheets. And so last year they announced a, a, a connection from Google Sheets to BigQuery that was an add-on mm -hmm. that meant you could write your SQL code in a little editor window from your sheet directly. And then it would go and run that SQL query on your BigQuery database and return the aggregated results back into your sheet just to save you having to sort of jump between the two. But this year, what they announced was this thing called connected sheets, which is where you can actually bypass that SQL. Uh, in, it saves you having to write the SQL code and you can just use your BigQuery database as if it was a or BigQuery table, rather, as if it was a table in your Google Sheet. So you can just plug in 100 million rows of data <laughs> into your pivot table or your formula or your chart. And they showed a demonstration on, on the on stage of uh, running a pivot table on 128 million rows of data. And I think everybody's heads just went boom, <laughs> sort of like, <laughs> you know, with the possibilities of what this is going to do. So that was a huge announcement. And um, it's it's available now to sign up for a sort of alpha test, if you like, to try it out. Uh, and so it's still it'll be a while as it rolls out, I think, across the board. But what was really interesting was they they I think one of the differentiators for the Google Cloud platform is the strength of the data analytics tools and, mm. and that pipeline, and they're really pushing that. And they showed a few charts at, at some stages of that pipeline with all the tools, you know, and there's data fusion and data proc which i don't know much about and then bigquery in the middle which they described as the crown jewel of the of the platform and then at the at the pointy end which is kind of where i work was big was data studio as you know the mm -hmm. one and right underneath it was google sheets now making an appearance on that they're sort of pushing that now as like hey it's a legit legitimate endpoint for the you know for your big data pipeline mm -hmm. um so that was really, really interesting to see that they're, they're sort of integrating sheets more uh, closely with, the, with that data analysis GCP pipeline. Um, so that was one, that was probably the biggest announcement for, for me and, and, you know, for the data sheets, data sort of world. Uh, Steve, was there, I know you were kind of dipping in remotely to bits and pieces. Was, was there anything that, um, caught, caught your eye in particular? Yeah, I think as a follow-up to what Ben just said, on the roadmap, Ben, they mentioned uh, a report feature in spreadsheets, which kind of reminds me of what Data, Data Studio does. Um, did you see anything about that? We're talking? Yeah, yeah we did. They, they showed a demonstration, actually, again, of that. And it's a way to just, again, make it a little more e easier for people to create good well professional looking reports in sheets that sort of look a little bit less like a ad hoc spreadsheet and more like a final product uh, and so you can store and save themes that then you can just apply which would add sort of certain colors and styling and, uh, and formatting to your sheets you can line up lots of charts now and get the the um those sort of red uh the kind of snap lines. Snap lines, that's yeah, what I'm thinking yeah, about. Yeah. yeah, you can get those snap lines now in sheets. Um, so just you know, a lot of a lot of things like that that will just make it really nice now to make those reports. And then I think you can sort of save them as templates then. You can you can not I think you can actually save them as templates then to use again and again. So every time you 
want to recreate that same report, it should just be a, a matter of a couple of clicks and you're done instead of having to re recreate the wheel. Interesting. Uh, another thing I noticed was a presentation by Googlers Eric and Charles. And they did a really good job where they said, hey, uh, let's talk about spreadsheets. You know, it's a great place to start. Uh, you can uh, put something together. It could be, then you can share it. And then you may get a fan base and there's more collaboration. And then you're starting to scale and you add stuff. So it was pretty good. And then he actually went to say, well, maybe it's time to go to AppMaker. And then during that presentation, what was nice was going from your spreadsheet or sheet tabs and going into AppMaker to say, I want to connect those to AppMaker to kind of build the schema and then also import the data. So it's not like you're starting the Cloud SQL from scratch. It, they made a nice transition there. And I thought that was well done, actually. Yeah, that, that yeah. was a nice presentation. Yeah, again, clear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And yeah, you, 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 you know, the mention of the life cycle, and you know, that's. I think that's always a good a question I also get asked with. You know, when do you go from a sheet then to an amateur? Mm. Like, how do you make that choice, right? And ultimately, like you know, I think that session really highlights you know the cost of it, like. To throw a spreadsheet together, that's easy. To iterate on it, that's not too hard either once you add app script. Then once you get to app maker, maybe a little more work to build the screen and all that. But through each cycle, you're learning more. Right? And that's really, you know, very agile way of thinking of how you approach your problem. And ultimately they talked about, you know, even just after app maker, once you've outgrown it, like even doing a complete custom development. And to me, like I think that sometimes I feel App maker, I see question, people like saying you can't accomplish certain things with app maker, and that's that's true, right? It's a local development platform, and ultimately, if you find you're even outgrowing app maker, yeah, you, the channel is probably you may need to do custom development. But there's so by doing the app maker app, you gain so much already in terms of learning, in terms of working on your with your users and the data. Um, like Steve said, you, if you start with a spreadsheet and then you go to Cloud SQL. Cloud SQL data can go to any application once you, even if you go custom development, it might just be swapping out an interface or you know, or at least the data that you've collected so far is usable. And and I think that's, you know, yeah, that session really highlights that, you know, it it's not the end all be, each solution is not an end all be all. Like you can mm -hmm. upgrade and kind of approach and make, make your solution better and better as you go along. Yeah, it was a, it was a great session actually, and I think, just to add a little bit to what both of you said is, um, you know, it just showed that when you have an idea, you can you can just quickly start with that spreadsheet. You don't you can start gathering data and feedback, and then decide whether it's worth pursuing. And then each step is like a way to make it a bit more robust, a bit more scalable. But you know, it sort of can uh, happen in tandem with the growth of the um, user base and things. So yeah, it was a good session. Great session. I, I guess one of the we've yet to you know with the things like the um the, the google sheets dashboarding um i guess you know because they're so early in development right now we're completely in the dark in terms of the impact that's going to have on google apps script developers in terms of you know what what is i guess it's still underlying you know is it still a sheet? Is it still accessible by App Script? I'm, I'm guessing I'm putting out the impossible question there. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 it's still a sheet. I guess it's a connected sheet now. Um, mm. The other thing they announced actually just very quickly on that was the idea of on-prem connectors for sheets. So you can connect your sheet to a MySQL database that's on your own servers and that kind of thing. Um, so that was another data connector they announced. Um, AppScript was, they were sort of, it was pretty quiet actually on the AppScript front directly. There were no um, new direct AppScript announcements. There was a lot of talk between sessions with people about things going on and stuff. So I think, you know, there's a lot of things in the pipeline, but they just weren't ready to share. Um, and, you know, as Claire's mentioned, AppScript's sort of what's behind AppMaker. And um, so it's, it's definitely, not going anywhere uh, except forwards. <laughs> um, well, it's, then, it's, 
Yeah, go on. Oh, it's funny because I was looking at my notes from next 18 and it's like one of the big uh, app script announcements was the V8 engine, which we know is exactly it's and it's been tested internally yeah by a selected number of people i think i think i've heard wind of you know it was perhaps pushed out to a, a a particular geographic region but i don't know that the accuracy of that but i think google have been testing it internally but we still haven't seen it <laughs> yeah no there was um nothing was announced actually on that front either at the moment so there's no update there. Um, but there was another session, actually, that I wonder if you've watched, um, Steve, as specifically, was this session about G Suite add-ons. I didn't actually go to that one myself, but they, they're trying to make that whole add-on process and uh, the marketplace more consistent, because uh, I think it's fairly fragmented at the moment, um, but more consistent. And, and they're working with partners to bring um, partners on board that then the, these sidebars that we have now in our, in our G Suite apps that the add-ons can exist in and they'll be consistent then across gmail calendar sheets docs the idea is to sort of try and minimize the the context switching they call it um yeah yeah i, I at first i was confused uh but now i think i understand the the real estate that they're talking about so if we bring up a doc or a spreadsheet or whatever uh or gmail the very far right, there's a tiny sidebar that will have like the calendar and things like that where you can click on to, to fulfill what you just said. So I guess that space, they're talking about G Suite add-ons, which is separate from what we call add-ons today, which is a little bit over to the left, right? So, <laughs> uh, so, so I think uh, that's, that's interesting because it, it seems like it's taking it uh, a frame higher, if that's a one way of saying it. <laughs> so uh, I'll be interesting to see uh, how that actually works, because if it exists there, then does that mean you have a G Suite add-on that will be existing for sheets, slides, forms, Gmail? I don't know. Do you, did, do you have a chance to look at the um, G Suite add-ons? I've only kind of touched the kind of surface on those um was it something you clear had a chance to look at or do you end it i don't i don't really know much about that oh, right. yeah, i do know app maker other plans to make it better be uh, like easier to deploy to the g suite marketplace and all that but i don't not sure exactly what that means though like it's like i know within the your domain, like Amaker apps can only be used within your domain. Does that mean you can actually start publishing outside your domain? That's, a, I guess, a question. <laughs> I think there, there is a general rebranding as well. Or, well, is G Suite add on a new terminology, Steve? Or, yeah, I think we're talking about two classifications. What we have add ons today is saying if I create a spreadsheet add-on it's only going to be applicable for the spreadsheet mm. a g suite add-on i'm guessing here reading between the lines a g suite add-on says i'm going to exist no matter if you're in slides or sheets or docs it's going to be there mm. yeah. working within your g suite uh environment domain or what have you but uh i i need further clarification to see if that's true or not I think one of the things, um, and I'm, I might have this wrong, is with the G Suite add-ons, um, I think it's, again, an indication in terms of developing those. Um, I think it's a card service rather than HTML service. Um, ben, have you, did you have a chance to look more in more depth in terms of? Um, no, not, not really, because I didn't actually go to that session. Mm -hmm. and. You know, but not being an add-on developer myself, actually, I'm not. Um, yeah, I can't really give you any more details, but I believe that's true. What you just said as well, actually, thinking back to now, what I what I heard, I believe that's true. Um, mm. And Steve, your point as well. I'm not 100 percent sure. You know how that lies, but I think that one of the goals is to try and simplify and make things a little more consistent across the different G Suite platforms. Um, 
So we'll see. Um, but there is a session. There's, there's that session actually that was about these G Suite add-ons. For anyone who wants to check that out, it's always a really interesting when Google do these announcements. That you know, quite often they do have they're working with a partner and um, or a number of partners. And sometimes you know those partners, uh, you know the the it's like. They they feel that they have to be at the show, but potentially those partners are at the end of the day, they might potentially be losing customers. So be, you know, I think with the um, G, G Suite add-ons, you know, Evernote were um, one of the announced partners to begin with, and um, you just think, well, where does Evernote sit with something like Google Keep? And so it's a really interesting kind of melting pot. Um, I'm just seeing from uh, Rudy in the chat. Um, so Rudy thinks that G Suite add-ons are going to be card-based, like email. Um, so yeah, I think more indication of of, of card card infrastructure coming. It'll be interesting, I think. For I've done a bit of card development with um, the Hangouts chat, um, and and kind of bot development as part of that. And I think it'll be interesting to see if there are, there are tools that kind of assist people and kind of rather than because the card service is kind of JSON based objects and um, they, they can in terms of, you know, the, the tree depth, it's gets pretty massive at times and it gets really hard to code. And um, I just wonder if there'll be uh, tools coming out that will help developers and designers actually, you know, drag and drop design their cards, and then the code will pop out the end. But I guess that's a bit like App Maker. <laughs> I was I was about to say that. That sounds like App Maker. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Same interface. <laughs> As um, so we've mentioned that you know there was a number of announcements at next, and um, we'll we'll share links to to, to some of the things we were talking about. But there was a slew of um, beta programs uh, that you can sign up to. So uh, Stefan Rion um, is actually, he's pulled together a list of the G Suite ones. And I think, uh, how many are there? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine early access programs that um, you, you, can, you can sign up around G Suite. Um, uh, so we'll share a link to those as well. Um, have any of you managed to get on to those programs? Not yet. No, no not, not yet either. <laughs> but it's on my list to try um, soon. And there was, there was a few other updates as well, actually, Martin, on the sheet side, mm -hmm. which I think will be interesting for anybody who you know, does development work with sheets, um, one of which was slices, which are these filters you can attach to your pivot tables to um, you know, do filtering in your pivot tables, essentially. Um, so they're going to be a really nice feature. They've been around in Excel for forever, um, but finally getting them in Sheets. Um, so it'll be nice to see them in action. Uh, then the other big announcement was that you can now work with Office documents in, in mm -hmm. G Suite, yeah. um, which is kind of an interesting one. I haven't, haven't tried that out actually, but every time, now, as soon as I mention it now, I want to go and open up an Excel in yeah. Sheets apparently. <laughs> so I figured that I'd try. Um, and then also you can see and edit the history of individual cells. That's another thing they announced that's coming, which is kind of interesting just to see who's, so you could look at a sort of, you know, say a result cell that had mm. some financial data in, and you could go back and see the history of that cell of how it arrived at its, at its um, current state. So that'll be pretty interesting, especially if that's available um, you know, through the app script API. But um, yeah, that's all still in the future. Yeah, that reminds me. There's also the option now with images and spreadsheets. You can actually put it inside of a cell. That's right. And what, what makes that interesting for people who use G Suite, let's say out in the field where they use the mobile version of Sheets, uh, it does show up there as well. So think about someone on the field, they need to upload a signature. 
uh, now it's now they can do that right within a cell. So mm -hmm. I thought that was a nice little nugget. <laughs> yeah. Would, did you get any sense? I know Ben, your interest is in um, you know it's around data and Google Sheets. Um, with the other editors, that were, were was there anything? came out i think there were wider announcements around drive in terms of metadata yeah yeah there were um and then the um what we used to call google plus the is now called currents and it only exists now for enterprise customers so um but that's that was a new product it's a the enterprise version of google plus now um mm. but i've not tried that out um, and, and the just... data and the approval workflow for drives actually I thought was quite interesting because I know that's a problem for like our team count or just you know our organization in general. Like sometimes the whole how do you how do you organize your documentation and then approval workflows has been either doing an admicker app or emails and so forth. So I think yeah, like those when I heard about those, it's like, oh that's that that would actually be really useful to be able to actually give more meanings to your file folder structure or yeah just you know with the tags and oh metadata and so forth and then be able to assign something like people do our organizer people do use the task thing the plus you add people to your take people on the documents which you know does work but i think having kind of a more for more formal kind of workflow process in drive is would be very very beneficial that also reminds me, they're going to rename team drives to shared drives, I think. And yeah, and then, yeah, they are rebranding it, yeah. Yeah, and then I saw someone shared in our AppScript um, community that, I guess it came out on April 24th, upcoming changes to the Google Drive mm -hmm. API and Google Picker API, where they do refer to, in that blog, the name from team drives to just drives through the perspective of drive API, that is. So there are some to do items, looks like some of us may need to do before, is it June 1st, 2020, or something like that? No, January, it looks like. Mm. So I know some people, when they write app script, you have a choice, right? Do you use drive app or the drive API through the advanced services? And if you do, depending on what you have coded, you may now need to go in there and make some changes. I've, interesting backstory with Team Drive. Uh, our organization signed up as part of the beta. And then um, at that point, there were certain features that weren't available, uh, like sharing outside of our, our domain. So we, we basically put the product to one side and said, no, let's just keep working within drives and use groups for uh, sharing stuff. And um, it was only when I revisited Team Drives uh, more recently realized that, that that the sharing beyond your domain is 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 now a feature. So it's, this is one of the disadvantages of um, signing up for the beta is that you are working with the beta. <laughs> and features may appear at a later date that you might miss. <laughs> Yeah, any, any of the newest products that they, they just have so many features coming. Um, you know, Data Studio always has new features coming along. App Maker, as Cleo mm. said, is developing so quickly. So, if it doesn't have the feature you want right now, check again tomorrow. And it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. But the the workflows stuff looks interesting, and again, I guess that kind of uh, links back to your the earlier comment about becoming much more enterprise focused um, and you know integrating into you know uh, you know what what the organization needs in terms of um, features and I think as well the G suite add-ons um, you know you can see how you know for example we already use DocuSign which is a digital signing service um, and I know DocuSign were one of the partners that and next that were um I think they might be part of the G Suite add-on um kind of partner 
kind of showcase. Um, so it's it's really interesting to see um, G Suite develop. Was there anything else that um, caught your eye that potentially is, was outside of G Suite and kind of more wider horizon stuff? Um, on the uh, data pipeline side of things, again, they announced something called B BI Engine. And so what it does is it, it sits on top of BigQuery, and it's like an in-memory analytics engine to make your BigQuery uh, computation is just much, much faster. So when you connect it in Data Studio, say, and you've got a chart in Data Studio that's working off, you know, gigantic tables using BI Engine, and everything should render and um, display and be more interactive at much more, much faster speeds and update much more quickly than it than it has been doing so far. Um, you know, so that's an, that was not really something that's directly applicable to me because I don't work with data anywhere near that scale. Um, but I think that's something that should be appealing to to people who have maybe been resistant to Data Studio at the moment because it's it, it's sort of you know a little too slow or or, or whatever. Um, but that should get a lot quicker now with that with that announcement. Um, and then they were really also pushing this thing called BigQuery ML, which is like a machine learning platform on top of BigQuery, so you can you can easily create, write, and train models uh, in BigQuery directly. And they made it look so easy on stage. I even thought maybe <laughs> I could <laughs> I could have a go. <laughs> so that'll be kind of interesting to see. Um, I think that was that was pretty interesting. It all sort of out the box data science stuff almost that you can then just go and use without um, you know having to do too much of the legwork. And I think what it the idea is it will get you it'll be you know 85 90 percent as good as the custom solution or whatever or, or 75 whatever the number is and that it's good enough so you, rather than go through the pain of creating your own models and training them you know you can you can lean on what this engine can do for you and it's a much much quicker way of getting to point b um, so yeah that was kind of interesting um Again, probably not something I'll use directly, but still mm. just an interesting. There was a lot of interesting technologies being announced. Was there anything related to Firebase during Next? Um, it was. I mean, I I heard it mentioned, but I don't really know too much about Firebase, and I didn't mm. hear. I didn't go to any sessions where it was directly announced. But they did have 123, 122 announcements. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it could well have been. Um, and Martin, actually, one of the links definitely that. You could share would be that list of all the announcements. Mm. Uh, I mean, I'll just. Clear yeah. was there. Sorry, I'm just going to ask a quick question. I don't know if you know the answer. Since this uh, almost like synchronization with uh, Sheets and BigQuery, that's what it feels like. Where Ben was saying millions of rows, I've actually seen a blog where it talks about billions of rows. Uh, does that mean that? The sheet's maximum 5 million cells is now much larger, or is it only in the context of BigQuery connection? Yeah, it's a good question. It, it sort of, you know, I had that same thought really when I heard it as well. Sort of, does that make, do we now call sheets as like a billion, a billion sort of rows of data kind of thing? But I think that it's still a distinction between, you know, you have your sheet and you might, most people might work with the data in the sheet the same way we've always been doing it so far. And then you would have to actually, you have to, physically connect into your table in BigQuery and you'll have to input your credentials to you know make that connection to BigQuery. And then what it would do is then bring, run your, well, actually I, it would then, yeah, it would just essentially work as if that was then a tab, I guess, of your Google Sheets. Mm. Um, so it kind of does open up to this idea of a, a gigantic Google Sheet. Um, but I haven't really, you know, I haven't had a go yet. And then, so I only just saw this quick demonstration. So, but it's definitely, I think it'll be a really interesting area to, to explore. Uh, and yeah, you're just going to find some big data sets now. <laughs> yeah. uh, Rudy's uh, keen for us to, uh, on the G Suite announcements page, um, you can see the status of kind of various G Suite products. Um, and he, he's keen for us to go through the, um, uh, the, the page for um, um app script so i think 
um, I don't think there's much to add to, on onto these, Rudy, up beyond what this data seems to be fairly accurate on most of these. So, for example, um, at modern JavaScript runtime, uh, Google says it's still in development. And as far as we know, it's still in development. Um, Managing management of AppScript Cloud projects by domain administrators. I think we're seeing some changes there in terms of how um, uh, cloud projects are, are linked to AppScript projects. I was picking up some news from the, the forum. Did, did anyone else see some changes there? Yeah, I've been following uh, some experiences that people are having um, mm -hmm. where there's this default state now. And so if you do need to go into the to the console, uh, you have to make that extra step. Otherwise, uh, they're trying to simplify it, I believe is the goal, um, to make it less intimidating. Uh, but some of us who are more in, uh, <laughs> in depth or complex with our scripting, it looks like we, now we need to take that extra step mm -hmm. uh, ourselves. I think uh, there is also a distinction between consumer. So if you're developing on gmail.com and G Suite accounts, I think there's uh, it's something for me to think about as I write quite a few tutorials is um, <laughs> when I'm saying, and now go off <laughs> and enable APIs and things like that. Um, it might be a different experience depending on the account that you're doing the tutorial in. So that could be interesting. Um, so other things, you know, like flexible quotas and job service we've heard about, I think they may have even been announced at next 18 and um, they're still marked as in development. And I don't think we've heard anything more on those. Um, uh, easy connection to OAuth secured APIs. Um, I haven't actually seen anything on that at all rather you know no news items even just to announce that as a, a feature that which is still marked in development um i do i don't know because working with third-party apis is something i do quite often in that script um is is that ringing any bells with people I'm seeing muted microphones. Yeah, not from uh, not from that. Actually, there wasn't really any any announcements on the, yeah. the AppScript side, so I I'd think, say uh, it couldn't really add anything to the yeah. what's already public on the on the web there. I, Rudy, in summary, I think um, the AppScript team are are catching up from next eighteen stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, but um, hopefully, we'll see some of these features. I, it sounds like some of them are trickling through. Um, so um, hopefully we'll see more uh, coming through. But um, certainly it seems healthy for AppScript right now in terms of uh, you know focus on the on the the product. And um, uh, I know uh, Grant Timmerman is um, very pleased with the take up of Clasp. He's he recently tweeted that um, the the numbers for that are um, are. Are going up, so I think for me that's a, a good indication that um, you know there there's a lot more development potentially going around AppScript. Well, I'm conscious of time, but um, are there any closing thoughts? Um, I would say it's a it's a fun it's a really fun week actually. If anybody's thinking of going, um, and you know, it's it's like a rock concert <laughs> for people who are into <laughs> Google products and technologies and stuff. It's it's kind of um, yeah, it's an experience like nothing else. And dates have been announced for next twenty. They have. It's in April again. Let me check the dates. So I think April six. Six to the eighth. Six to eight. Yep, um, in San Francisco again. So uh, I've blocked out my calendar. Hopefully. Uh, Next year, I won't be uh, double booked. Double booked. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's a good. It's all. It's a good experience. It's a good buzz around. Even right? if you just walk around the show floor. Yeah. And this year they have the show floor just on one one floor instead of the three floors last year. 
if I remember properly, but so it's like, it's huge. It just feels huge when going from one end to another. And I apparently miss Gwen Stefani. <laughs> 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 Didn't even realize she was there. <laughs> Did she do a session? No, the concert. The one of the, the concert. concert. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think they take over the park, don't they? Uh, yeah, yeah. And yeah, apparently yeah. she was playing there, so singing there, so yeah. <laughs> Rock concert, indeed. <laughs> how, how, do, do you think? Um, I was quite impressed with the diversity art when I went in 18. Um, do you think it's getting more balanced in terms of um, uh, presenters and, and delegates? Um, I see yeah, I think, yeah, I think I saw more, at least you know, for the amateur session, it was definitely a little more coming from outside. And the 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 most important question before we finish. I heard some rumors that they were they were running out of coffee. Was this true? <laughs> uh, they did actually at one point, I believe. But the Wi-Fi is much better this year. So they. Oh they yes! Oh yes! <laughs> I was so <laughs> last year it was like yeah, no connection. This year was really good. But yeah, the, the fun thing about the coffee is um yeah, Ben said the tip earlier, and my tip is uh read the map and know where the coffee is because you know, <laughs> the first day, the very first day we were there, I found we found the coffee right away. But you know, as I was walking around with the coffee, everyone's like, oh, "Where'd you get the coffee?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "It's on the map. Just look at it." <laughs> so yeah, tip: know where the food is. <laughs> Glad <to> look. <laughs> Well, I think we'll we'll call it a day there. But um, thank you, Ben and Cleo, uh, for for sharing your your next experience with us, and um, for Steve um, for um, what your insights and questions from the bits and pieces that you picked up as well. Thanks for hosting, Martin. And um, so, well, thank you. And um, we haven't got an, another show lined up, so if anyone's got anything they want to um, come on and. Uh, talk about on totally unscripted. We're completely open to um, offers, and um, equally, if there's anything you'd like us to talk about, um, feel free to drop us a line. I think the contact form on the totally unscripted website is still active. I'll have to check it because um, it's been a while since I've heard anything from there. Um, but until next time, thanks very much for watching, and uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode.